I've always wanted Storyline to have this trigger. And for the record, this really is fake news. This isn't real, uh, but I'd love to be able to move the X and Y of any object, like here. I want to move image 2's X to 10 pixels and Y to some you know, variable Y I have. Uh, then the user clicks the button and it jumps there. There's so much from an e-learning standpoint that we can do with you know, being able to move objects around on screen based on how the learner is interacting with them. So it would be lovely if this trigger existed. Now, I did build this, which uh, with a little more work should be kind of a cave person's way of getting a similar result. Uh, I want to move this dog while the project's running in, in preview mode or after it's published to a specific X and Y in real time. Now, I created this box just to kind of show that the dog is hitting its mark. So let's move this to, let's say, uh, 350 by 100. And now let me run a preview here. And I will type in 350 and 100 and hit go. And there it goes. It went to 350 and 100. Uh, so let's do this one more time. I have to restart the project because I haven't yet set it up to work in all directions, which I'll explain here in a bit. So let's drag this down here. Uh, let's see, preview this and type in the X and Y it showed. And hit go again. And there you go. You can see how I can move this image anywhere that I need it to go uh, in preview or if it was published. I don't have to kind of pre-set up the X and Y. I can just decide to type in any number here. Let me restart this. I'll just type in some random number here, and it'll jump to where I want it to go. So how is this done? Uh, I have another version here focused just on the X. Uh, first, the dog has two motion paths. Uh, they're hard to see here because the length of each path is just four pixels wide. Uh, you can see this one is called down, which really I only need one motion path here because I'm only moving X, but uh, this one's kind of carried over from my previous example. So down is the Y direction, and this other one here, if I can click it, this is called right. So this is the direction of right, which will make it move in the X direction. Both are four pixels from the original image. Uh, that's the you know, length of the motion path. So it'll move four pixels. They both have the path options set to relative start point so that you know each time it moves, it will start from where it left off instead of always starting from the original point. And durations that are set uh, to 0.10 seconds long, uh, which I really wish you could set it to zero seconds long, but you can't. Now when I click the Go button, it does two things. First, it sets a variable called X future. This is the number I want the object to get to. So if I want it to move 40 pixels, I would want this to be 40. Um, on the previous slide, I, you know, I kind of adjusted this so that there's a, um, a text field that you can enter it in that will set uh, X future or Y future in that case. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to set X future here. Second, uh, the button also has a trigger that shows the move X layer. So in this layer, we have a few things going on. I use the move trigger to move the picture using the motion path to the right. So it will move four pixels to the right. Then I hide the layer. I could probably adjust the order of these triggers here. Uh, but anyway, um, I, I hide the layer, add four to the variable I have here called x current. I just have to keep track of where the object currently is. Then I change the variable by four because my motion path moves by four. So if I try and move 100, because the image moves by fours, the variable I use to keep track of its position should also move by four. Then I show the same layer again. Basically, I just keep kind of looping the layer. Uh, as long as x current, which is where the object currently is, is less than x future, where it should get to, it will just keep looping this uh, layer. I also move the timeline in this layer to a quarter of a second. The first x and y version I showed a little earlier that has the timeline set to zero seconds, which you can do in a layer. I don't think you can do that in the base timeline, but in a layer, you can set it to zero seconds. That way, it runs almost instantly. Uh, but by moving it a quarter of a second, you can see the action occurring better when I preview this. So I'm going to preview, 
and hit go, and you'll see it just move slowly kind of each time it runs that uh, motion path. And again, because the motion path is set to relative start point, it's just going to keep starting from where it left off. So now you can imagine that if I spend a bit more time on this, add in a left and an up, and you know, keep really good track of where the X and Y positions are, I could enter a value, move the dog in any direction, enter another value, move it again, and so on, without having to restart the slide each time. Uh, you know, that's really my next step. Uh, I did run into a few hiccups along the way. First, in my original kind of just scene of this works, because it has to be precise, I created a one pixel by one pixel box and put a motion path on it. But, and you'll see here, because this is that version, when I preview this and I click this little uh, button here, which kind of keeps moving the motion path one pixel or a few pixels to the right, you can see it's slightly moving up instead of just perfectly across. Uh, see, and now it's completely disappeared from the slide. So that's not good. I, I have to have it moving exactly straight. It can't kind of go up or down. Um, and let me zoom in here. You can actually see the path does slightly go up. And I believe that this is because, because the object is one pixel tall, uh, when you put a motion path on it, it puts that motion path kind of in the middle of the pixel. But when you set the end point of the motion path, it has to kind of constrain it to a specific pixel. It can't kind of go half a pixel. Um, and because of that, the start point and the end point are slightly off. And I'll go to my next slide here. I thought that might be happening, so I made a two pixel by two pixel box instead of a one pixel by one pixel box. And that really should get us away from having half pixels. And it worked perfectly. So I recommend using images or shapes or whatever you need to use that end in an even number uh, so that you don't end up with this weird half pixel thing. Finally, you'll notice that I use a shape that moves four pixels each time instead of one pixel. When I tried to move an object one pixel each motion path, it kind of acted up a bit. Usually it just wouldn't move at all. It must be some memory or processing issue that when moving that object so many times so quickly, it just explodes. It just doesn't work. I don't know. But easy enough for me to move it by four pixels, and you know I don't think you'll really see the difference. It's close enough.